Chapter 10 is the most controversial of the book. It's about suffering, death, and all those unpleasant things we'd rather not talk about, but the Creed does. After stating that God became man, the Nicene Creed describes just how human he became. Jesus was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate and suffered and was buried. Put another way, in the incarnation, God died. How is that even possible? In the incarnation, God died. If you're following along in the book, you may remember this is the final sentence of chapter nine. And full disclosure, it was beyond terrifying to write those words. I lied awake night after night, second guessing that sentence because it's so easy to misunderstand. Maybe it would have been better to say it like Cyril of Alexandria did. We believe that the word of God is immortal and is life, but we also believe that he was made flesh and since his body suffered, he himself is said to have suffered, although by nature he is impassable. But that's a bit of a mouthful, and it basically says the same thing. God can't suffer and die, but Jesus suffered and died, and Jesus is God. Eventually, I decided to leave in the incarnation God died in the book to help us confront the great paradox of our faith. How far did the incarnation go? How far could it go? Did God become man or Superman, someone incapable of suffering and death? If he became Superman, then what he did on the cross would still be amazing and wonderful. It could save us, but we could never hope to live up to it, to imitate it. And yet, that is exactly what Christians just like you and me have done by God's grace for the better part of 2,000 years. Which brings us to the opening line of chapter 10. Permit me to be an imitator of the passion of my God. Ignatius of Antioch wrote these words sometime before the year 110. He was a second generation Christian, a disciple of one of Jesus' disciples, and an early martyr for the faith. Ignatius wanted one thing, to be like Christ in every way he could, in his life, but also in his death. I'll be honest, I didn't like Ignatius the first time I read him. I thought he was insane, like he had a martyr complex or a lion fetish or something. But then I read the New Testament with fresh eyes. Verses like Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. Or Luke 14.27, whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Or Philippians 3.10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. And I realized that maybe Ignatius was on to something. Maybe, just maybe, there was part of following Christ that I had overlooked. See, you may never need the grace to die for Christ like Ignatius did, but you will need the grace to live for him. And that's what chapter 10 is all about. How do we, how do we remain true to our beliefs no matter the cost? Where do we find courage and inner strength? How do we become true followers and not just fans of Jesus Christ? You may not like chapter 10 the first time you read it, the same way I didn't like Ignatius's letters. But here's my challenge to you. Instead of putting down the book, pick up another one. After reading chapter 10, reread the Gospels or the Psalms or Acts or Romans or 1st and 2nd Peter and see for yourself what the writers of Scripture knew by experience. Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example 
so that you might follow in his steps.